Hello everyone, we're Team Genki. My name's Eddie. I'm Andrew. And uh, you may have known us for a couple of Kickstarter projects. Uh, we basically launched the Genki Bluetooth audio adapter for the Nintendo Switch. And last year, we launched the world's smallest portable covert dock. And we just wanted to clear the air because a lot of people are concerned about breaking in third-party docks. We basically did everything in our power to make the covert dock as safe and reliable as possible, and we guarantee it will not break your system or harm your console in any way. We do know a lot of people are nervous about the Nyko breaking incident uh, back two years ago. The Nyko dock did have a history of breaking actually before the firmware 5.0 update, but it became a lot more prominent later. Uh, the 5.0 update actually introduced a lot of auto update features, so when it's docked in a standby mode, it's receiving news updates and game updates, which triggers the dock to actually turn on and off more times throughout the day. And if it's a risky dock, it basically causes more chance of your switch breaking over time. We took a lot of precautions to make sure nothing from the Nyko dock incident would ever be repeated, as well as some learnings from other docks that were made um, since then. Andrew, if you can tell us a little bit more about why the Nyko dock was actually made poorly. So there are two things with the Nyko dock that I found to have a big issue that contributed to breaking. Uh, one of them is it doesn't actually use a PD chip. It uses a microcontroller to emulate a PD chip's functionality due to cost considerations. And in doing so, when you emulate something, nothing is perfect. You cannot achieve the identical properties of a dedicated PD chip. Thus, you have breaking issues related to imperfect coding or imperfect power management. And Nyko also has a elongated USB-C port, which causes potential for bricking because it's not made to spec to the USB-C port certification. And in doing so, all these uh, connections will could possibly cross and short out their switch. Yeah, so, I mean, right now the official Nintendo Switch USB-C slides in very smoothly into official dock. And what happens, since it's not really a standard USB-C head, standard USB-C ports actually don't slide in so smoothly. So a lot of these third-party docks, they're trying to recreate that. And it's kind of iffy because they're not certified ports. So we can't really, they're not really, you know, reliable, right? Yeah. So that's kind of an issue with a lot of third-party docks that have that built-in head that's not certified. So let's get started with the teardown. And as, as we do it, we're gonna walk through uh, how we build some safeguards to prevent breaking and other uh, things that may damage your console. So a lot of people have been asking whether or not the Nintendo Switch is actually PD compliant and whether that actually matters in terms of breaking. What are your thoughts? Uh, I believe the Switch is compliant enough for it to charge, but when you go into specifics on compliance, it means a lot of different things, such as when docking, it might take a little more power, etc. And when we were designing our cover dock, we strongly considered its special characteristics, the switch's special characteristics in terms of how it handles power. And um, we actually went as far as to using the same chips that the official charger used and worked with engineers that also worked on the official charger. Um, so another big question people will keep asking or, or worried about are, well, can firmware updates break my Nintendo Switch? I believe firmware updates inherently don't damage the Switch. It's perhaps the auto updates as it reoccurs and turns on a faulty dock in the first place over and over and over that's causing the potential for breaking. So regarding power, I know uh, Wolfden talked a lot about how um, on your Reddit post you mentioned 6 volts is what the Nintendo Switch gets and then he also said Nathan K says 15 and I think there's just a little bit of misquoting. Can you just clarify what you meant by 6 volts? By 6 volts I meant the maximum allowable voltage for the PD chip data lines. So there's a dis you have to distinguish power and data. And power is capable of going up to 20 volts, but for data, only six volts. And with a non-compliant or poorly made, poorly designed USB-C, you'll have issues where the data lines and the power lines actually cross. And in doing so, the 15 volts 
or any voltage above 6 could potentially route through the data lines to fry the PD chip in the switch. So what happens when breaking is actually it prevents the switch from actually charging because the PD chip is damaged. So um, I guess just to explain kind of when people say breaking, what is the most common reason that is actually the reason. One of the last things Bob did on his Wolf Den show was basically show different docks and how much power they consume. And the only real difference he saw was that when the Switch was fully charged, the official Nintendo Switch charger and dock actually stopped charging when it was full, while the other uh, dock still had some power remaining. Can you explain if that matters and how the covert dock reacts in a situation like this? Our covert dock actually adheres right with the official charger at maximum charge for the Switch there's no voltage and there's no amperage. So there's zero, zero watts, practically zero watts. As regarding your point, if it matters, I don't think it matters because the current level is so small, so little, there's barely any difference. So one of the biggest concerns I have with my Nintendo Switch is if I bricked, will I lose all my save data? I mean, my Animal Crossing files, I've spent hundreds of hours. How do I, what, what uh, should I be worried? 90% of the cases are bricking are only because of the USB PD chip, which is inherently its own island in terms of the switch circuit tree. Typically when you break, all you have to do is find a shop to replace the USB-C PD chip and you have a fully functioning switch. And all my save data will still be there? Yes, your save data will still be there. So I can ignore cloud saves. Great. Okay. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, follow us on social media. We'll try to do a little bit more videos like this, kind of explaining uh, the hardware, maybe some of our design insights and tech insights as we build more fantastic products for the gaming consoles. Thanks. Thanks.